Aaron Gordon, the fourth overall pick of the 2014 NBA Draft. One of the most athletic players we've ever seen, who rose to prominence during the 2016 Slam Dunk Contest. The greatest dunk contest we've seen in decades. Julius Randle, the seventh pick of the 2014 Draft. After a rough start to his rookie season where he broke his leg, Randle successfully recovered and made his mark in Los Angeles. These two guys were drafted in the same year, a few selections apart, and they were both expected to blossom into stars due to their early success. Both of them had a breakout season not too long ago, and everyone believed it would be the final step for them to make that jump. That leap into a legit all-star and carry their respective teams to the next level. Unfortunately, despite seeing their careers quickly progress, they kind of stagnated. Now, they've been treading water, barely keeping their head above it, playing for mediocre or straight-up terrible teams with no light at the end of the tunnel. How's it going, folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Aaron Gordon and Julius Randle. What have they been doing recently, and after six years into their careers, why haven't they reached that next level? Well, one possible reason is that they've lost confidence in their style. The NBA has a huge problem with receding hairlines, and it's a trend. Statistically, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. We've seen it happen to even the greatest of stars. Gordon and Randall might be young right now, but you gotta assume they're thinking about how to prevent this trend from happening. Well, Keeps.com has an answer for that. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. It's now easier and more affordable to get treatment for your hair loss and help you keep your hair. Keeps offers scientifically proven treatments, both over-the-counter and prescription, that can combat the symptoms of hair loss. You can talk to a doctor online and get your hair loss medication delivered straight to your home. If you're noticing that you're losing your hair, do something about it. For a limited time, go to keeps.com slash andyhoops or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. First, let's start with Aaron Gordon. Back in 2015 and 2016, his expectations skyrocketed. Many believed he would be the next Blake Griffin, which didn't really make sense. The only thing similar about them is their physical appearance, I guess? So initially, this comparison was ridiculous, and it generated a lot of unfair assumptions about Gordon. He was not Blake Griffin, not even close. Even as of now, Gordon has never had a season that was better than Blake's rookie year. With that being said, he did see steady improvements in his early years. His three-point shot got better, and overall, his shooting got much better. As a result, in the summer of 2018, he was rewarded with a four-year, $84 million contract extension, which is a rather modest contract for the then 22-year-old Gordon. If he continues this trajectory, he would be well worth the value of his deal. However, afterwards, it's been a very rocky path, as he did not continue this trajectory. Nevertheless, the 2018-19 Orlando Magic were very good and won 17 more games than the previous season. Their defense, with the help of new head coach Steve Clifford, got so much better. They ranked 8th in the entire league, with an average defensive rating of 108. But with Gordon on the floor, their defensive rating improved to 105.1. But perhaps the biggest part of the Magic's improvement was not Gordon, but Nikola Vucevic, who became an all-star for the first time of his career. However, Gordon would now be recognized as a defensive stopper, and that was his role in the playoffs too, against the Raptors in the first round. Obviously, the Magic would still lose and got destroyed by Kawhi and Siakam, but this was a positive step in the right direction for Gordon and the Orlando Magic. This was the first playoff appearance of his NBA career and the first for the Magic since the Dwight Howard trade. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the Magic have been able to build on that, and neither has Gordon himself. Not just Gordon, but the other core pieces of the team, Vucevic, Evan Fournier, they've been always on the borderline, trying to keep the team afloat, trying to reach that next level. But all of their careers have stagnated. 
Considering that the three of these guys make up two-thirds of the team's salary cap, you'd expect at least one of them to perform like a consistent star. None of them have done that. For Gordon, it's a combination of having an ambiguous role and an uncertain place on the team. He's a hyper-athletic combo forward who resorts to too many jump shots, despite being more athletic than 95% of the league. In an article by Chris Merch of ThisLeague.net, this is how he described Gordon. Since this 2018 summer, however, we have seen Gordon go from potential all-star to who's going to trade for this guy? He has shown, at times, to be the prototypical power forward you want in today's NBA. The problem is that the quote at times aspect of that sentence is what really sticks out. You can, I guess, blame Gordon's doo-doo performance this season on real things like Steve Clifford's wonky offensive structure. Gordon may be playing out of position, the Magic prioritizing Jonathan Isaac's developments, or the Magic having 15 bigs on their roster. Gordon's career has not progressed the way we thought it would, and instead, in the 2019-20 season, he's been underwhelming. His defense has dropped off, his numbers, his percentages have all regressed. The Orlando Magic as a team have been struggling because they have no identity. They're not sure what direction they want to go in, as their team is still young, but nobody has shown that they're capable of carrying this franchise. They've had so many high draft picks over the years, and they've had many years to prove it. Don't get me wrong, many of them turned into solid players, but no actual superstar which is honestly what they need. It would bring way more excitement to the team and the fans. This organization desperately needs that. That excitement has been missing ever since they traded away Dwight Howard. Now, what's the deal with Julius Randle? Well, his career has gone in a similar path as Gordon's. In Randall's first few years, he showed flashes of brilliance, of star potential, and there was hope he could pave the way for the next generation of power forwards. Randall is a unique player. He's incredibly strong, has great handles for his size, could dribble and pass quite well, and plays like a bulldog in the paint. However, in reality, he only plays like that for a few games every season. Most of the time, he plays like a, a broken dreidel. Spinning, but not winning. In so many situations, he looks out of control. He has tunnel vision, he commits a lot of offensive fouls, and his shot selection is terrible. However, things were looking bright for a few years. Near the end of his tenure with the Lakers, Randall started to change the way he played. Instead of settling for off-balance shots, he took it right to the paint. In 2017-18, he shot 55% of his field goals at the rim, a huge leap compared to his previous seasons hovering around 46%. As a result, his efficiency skyrocketed for that season, finishing with a career-high 61% true shooting percentage. Then in the following season, he signed a small, short deal with the Pelicans. The whole year was plagued with drama surrounding Anthony Davis. Davis would miss a ton of games, he would intentionally sit out, and the team just did not want to risk him getting injured because he requested a trade, and everyone knew he was gone. This gave room for Randall to shine, as he would have the best season of his career. Randall averaged a career high in scoring and really took this opportunity to shine, despite a turbulent season of rumors and uneasiness. For his fans, it was amazing to see him play so well he finally looked like he was reaching his full potential. But for Randall himself, he made it known that he just appreciates that a team wants him. When asked about why he signed with New Orleans, he said, If you ask every NBA player if they had their dream scenario, their dream scenario is everyone just wants to be wanted. For me, talking to New Orleans, they wanted me. I was a part of their future. Uh, however, a year later, Randall would move on. He opted out of the second year of his contract, and he wanted a bigger payday. That's when the Knicks came swooping in, offering him a three-year, $63 million contract. He's now making roughly the same per year as Aaron Gordon. But Randall, being on the Knicks and all, it's been a roller coaster ride. As the primary option, he had to carry the burden of an entire franchise on his back. A struggling franchise at that. We all know how bad the Knicks have been for such a long time, and they truly haven't recovered in the post-Mellow era. 
Similar to Orlando, the Knicks have a mishmash of young talent who are solid, but they haven't put it all together. It's going to take a while for RJ Barrett to blossom, and during this time, I guess we have to be patient with watching the Julius Randle show. So far in the 2019-20 season, Randle has seen his ups and downs, and overall, it doesn't look like he has the talent to truly carry a franchise. Granted, the rest of the team sucks, so perhaps he deserves some slack. It's just that, after signing his first big contract, Randle has not improved in the way the Knicks thought he would. He actually regressed and went back to playing very sloppily like back in the early days with the Lakers. And that's been pretty alarming. It's made Knicks fans feel like he just wanted his payday and only played well in his contract year. It sucks because I initially expected Dennis Smith Jr. would also be a future franchise cornerstone, and along with Randall, my hopes were that they'd be a prominent duo. But DSJ has been absolutely terrible, and he's most certainly gonna be gone by the summer of 2020. There's no way the Knicks keep him. For Randall, there were some trade rumors floating around during the deadline, and the rumors will continue over the summer too. I want to see him stay, but now, I'm not sure if the team wants him to stay. Anyway, that's all folks, that sums up the careers of Aaron Gordon and Julius Randle thus far. Two 2014 draft prospects who many believed had superstar potential, and they both steadily improved throughout their first few years, but now they've stagnated. And I don't know if they'll ever make that jump. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about these two players. Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.